This is Berkeley CMA video series. Today we are going to discuss about investment decisions. We have two study units for this investment decisions one and investment investment decisions two. Broadly we are going to discuss these topics capital budgeting process, DCFs, discounted cash flows and then payback and discounted paybacks and in the last we will learn how to rank the investment proposals now before i go in a discussion of uh, each say, unit uh, i have to just give uh, here the clear idea about what we are going to learn in this unit the first thing is capital budgeting process we will first of all uh, we should be very clear that what is a capital budget and the second stage will come when we will learn how to develop the capital budget and what is the process to make it. Generally we know the budget has two major categories. One is the operational budgets in which we learn how to make the sales budget, income budget, then expense, cost of sale, direct material, direct labor and we reach to a performa income statement level. This is one part of making the budget. The other part is called financial budgets. In financial budgets, we have to predict about the cash budget and surely the capital budgeting, capital budget is very important to develop and supplement to the main uh, cash budgets and financial budgets. Capital assets are very important for the companies generally companies want to grow they want to invest in their plant and equipment they have investment proposals they want to increase the production capacity they want to build up a new plant they want to start a new venture if they are in us they want to go in europe and uh, uh, they want to go in all over the world so surely this is a capital study is required before they can go for any investment decisions. Now for making a capital budgeting, uh, surely we should be very clear what this budget is about. We have investment proposals for a, a capital investment and uh, for the long term, this is for the long term nature and uh, there is a specific defined procedure for that what is that we are going to discuss uh, in this unit then we are talking about discounted cash flow shortly we call them dcf this is also uh, a method to see and evaluate your business plans how effective and how healthy they are now <clears throat> discounted cash flows works on, on the concept of time value of money and surely there are two methods inside which is net present value and IRR uh, which surely we call NPV and uh, for internal rate of return we call it as IRR. These are cash based uh, methods we assume as of today that this year next year and the year after the life of the project how much cash will be expected to inflow and how much we uh, will be investing as a outflow based on that <clears throat> we apply the concept of time value of money now uh, let me just clear you what is the time value of money money loses its value over the time how to prove this statement just assume talking with your uh, old members of family they give us a statement that 20 years before the cost of the land in my area was this much which is they always tell a very very uh, fewer than the price as of today so uh, in this this depicts that the time value time, uh, the value uh, with the passage of time the money lose its value so whatever 
one million dollar has the real worth be, uh, 50 years before the, the, that 50 million is having less worth as of today now how to uh, control this variation suppose if someone as an investor come to us he give us one proposal he says okay invest one million dollar and get five million dollar after five years now what would be the worth of this five million dollar after five years we have to assume as of today what is his worth we have inflation we have uh, the interest rates uh, issues with fair fluctuation variations that is going to affect the real value of the money so as of today we have to calculate what would be the real worth of that 5 million which we are going to receive after 5 years as of today this concept of time value of money is very realistic and it gives investor a confidence uh, and um, a, a real uh, courage to invest based on the expected real uh, inflows that uh, an investor is hoping for every investor want to have a expected rate of return he has several options first of all he can go to a bank as a conventional method he, he can say okay this is my money i want to invest what expected rate i can get from it suppose they say okay four <clears> percent <throat> per year so uh, might be he goes to uh, uh, the uh, the equity uh, f uh, he can go for a hedge funding he can go for equity financing here company they are offering 10 percent <clears throat> he can go to some other company or looking for a private angels private investor they can offer 14 percent so it depends and every investor has a lot of options with him in terms of uh, his investment so surely there should be some criterions for making him some decisions and DCF discounted cash flows uh, help investor to reach to a point where he start uh, feeling in the figure terms that uh, which option is the right option for uh, him in DCF we use the discount rate which is sometimes called as hurdle rate as well this rate is uh, given by the stat statisticians by uh, their calculations which uh, tell us that uh, after one year if we are talking about one dollar it will remain like 0.98 after two years three years it will keep losing its value so based on that we take the amount of inflow and outflow and we uh, multiply with the hurdle rate or discount rate and we get the value that is called present value of the future inflow that we are going to expect in NPV method if the NPV and in net present value of all future inflows and outflows net is positive then we should go for that investment that investment is a good investment as a basic mechanism but surely in the practical scenario we have to see other factor as well what is the life of the project what is the product this product is life lasting this product is riskier what would be the market trends investment options surely there are a lot of consideration before we can go to it and just now i am discussing the financial part financial calculations for that we are discussing DCF and NPV if it is positive you will go down for that pro project and for IRR we assume where NPV is equal to zero then this is the point where we can consider it as the best point for the investor and investor has should go for that one apart from cash flow based methods we have the conventional accounting based methods as well which is typically a payback method every investor want to see that whatever money is going to invest how much would be the expected return period for example you can simply ask a question that if i invest one million dollar in a business so in how many years how much time i will get this all uh, back so this is a payback concept of calculation which 
surely based on the accounting terms and accounting calculation is different from the DCF because DCF uh, works on the cash flows and uh, this method work on the accounting calculations. Then we have a discounted uh, payback method as well based on the calculations given to um, that we achieve from payback. We make it more realistic. We discount it. We apply the hurdle rate on it to see uh, the time value of money implications and we reach to a figure which is more practical and realistic in, in, in its true sense. Then we uh, will uh, learn how to rank the investments and uh, what would be the if we have different projects and we have NPV which is positive for two projects and IRR which is near to zero and PV is equal to zero in that case. So what would be the suitable criterions? Which factors we should go for? Generally, it's not uh, someone comes to you, he says, okay, I will offer you 10%. Your desired rate is okay, 8%. So you are well, well enough. Uh, we are going to meet your expectations. So invest with us. No, it's not like that. Surely we have certain methods. And along this, we have to see the micro and macro dynamics of the economy. You, can, you should know the money, where it is going to invest. For example, if uh, your money is going to invest in the real estate and all 10 major tycoons of are also investing in the real estate so this real estate industry will reach to a saturation point when it will start declining so you have to see that which area you are working which industrial state like expansion boom or decline which phase the industry itself is lying and what is the room for that particular industry to expand on contract so i'm keeping in view we have, we should know the expected inflation level interest rate political confidence technological factors and other kind of uh, uh, macro and micro variables for uh, deciding any investment proposal and the rules and regulation in terms of company law taxation in terms of auditing standards in terms of the government regulations directives where where they want to place their economy this is very important to consider